Right, folks. Well, you just obviously heard Give Me a Sign, and it is a real pleasure to be joined on the phone all the way from Norway by, uh, by Age himself. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Um, obviously, we were supposed to have done this at Christmas, but studio computers being what they are, for the first time in history, it decided to die at the crucial time. So apologies for that. But it's great to finally get you on the show. And I've got to say, I'll be honest, Ammunition is a superb album. I have played it a hell of a lot. Uh, absolutely love it. Thanks. I'm, a, you know, I'm a, I've lived with those songs for like a year, so... I'm I'm already about to to start you know writing new songs and we have all kinds of cool new riffs so but it's it's cool now it's finally out it's it's coming out during the weekend I think in uh, in the UK is is not so it is indeed and I mean just judging by the reactions obviously it's already been out in Japan and judging by obviously the reactions of people over there who've already got it and people who've heard sound bites uh, it is already going down an absolute storm. That's great to hear. I mean, it, it's a it's a new band unit, and uh, you know, uh, some people might might think it's just a project. You know, it's like it's only going to be one album, and you know, it's okay. like a, one of those you know super super bands uh, that is going around. Yeah, but but this is a real strong band unit, and we really we really enjoy our our company. I mean, uh, we all made best friends, even though. Two other guys live in, in Stockholm. The bass player lives in Copenhagen, and mm. three of us uh, we we live in Norway. I mean, this this there's a strong connection there, and uh, especially for Eric and me to write together. I mean, we really found some some magic there uh, writing to get together, and uh, it's good to have not only a, a good writing but also a, a good friend like Eric. He, he's a guy that I can talk talk to for hours. And John, you know, the other guitar player, we've been working together for like eight years. He's okay. the guitar player in my, my Queen show. Well, I mean, Eric's got to be said, uh, he's one of those guys who's done so much to, um, to bring rock music alive, especially in Scandinavia yeah. and all over Europe. I mean... Uh, he never stops working, that guy. So, so for <laughs> the, the two of you to write together is uh, is is fantastic. He's a machine with a machine with the biggest heart I've ever seen. And you know, he when we started to record this album, I mean, this guy he was up there in the studio at eight o'clock, uh, putting on the coffee. And I used to live in a cottage there, uh, like three minutes uh, from from the studio. And you know, to ha to have those magic hours there in the early mornings with, with Eric. I mean, we just tune up our guitars and we will work until like 12, like, or 11 or during night. And he would never stop until it's like perfect. So, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure to work with. And I really understand why, why people want him to produce their albums. And I think this guy is going to grow as a producer as well. I mean, uh, I believe there will be so many big, big bands that will actually uh, uh, calling up for for production, guaranteed. Oh, absolutely! I say uh, he's got his finger in so many pies, and and my hats off to him for what he's done. Um, absolutely fantastic! But and the cool thing is, I mean, he's got his own band, Eclipse. Uh, their their album is also been reviewed like of the year. And he's a singer in that band, <laughs> and he's a bass player in another band, and in 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 this band he's a guitar player because he enjoys so much. I mean, to just to be on stage, to be able to mm. sing, to be able to write songs, play guitar. So he's uh, he's a whole fucking band. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Well one question I'm going to have to ask you, and it's a question I know you've been asked a million times, and I'm going to ask um, not just because the people um, listening in want to know, but obviously myself being a Wigwam fan want to know the reason for why the band split up. I've got to ask the question. <laughs> yeah, I've been asked that a million times. Of course. I'm, I'm always trying to be honest. Okay. Uh, the thing is, in Norway... Uh, when when I started this Queen project and I had so many different projects, people would always look look on me as as the reason for the band splitting up. 
because I obviously didn't have time for the band. Okay. Which is very wrong. <laughs> That's why I'm so honest about it because I don't want people to think that I'm the reason for breaking up the band. Actually, we we struggled for years. I mean, to have have uh, both Tron and me in the same band. I mean, we're stubborn people. <laughs> <laughs> we both want to have it our way. But you know, at the same time, uh, it it was kind of a hell ride for quite a while. Um, two other guys started a new band, Baby Snakes, and released. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know they were starting a new band. This was in 2012. Okay. And 2000. 2010, we had a great year with the nonstop rock and roll. We mm. went on, on a big tour, and we started up in in uh, Norway with uh, the, the Sound of Winter, which is a, which is a big, big outdoor uh, festival, uh, benefit uh, festival for you know the cancer case. And went to Japan. We went all over the place, and I even won. You know the uh, I believe it's called the Clash of the Choirs in the UK. Right. Okay. It's a TV program. It's like, uh, uh, and I brought in the band, of course, and we did that. Uh, Do you really want to taste it? And and, uh, and the program brought you know the single to number one. But you know, in 2012, uh, the guys suddenly appeared on YouTube with a new single with a new band a week before we released our new single, We One single. And it was the same, you know, same style, <laughs> same songwriter, same studio, same guitar player, same bass player, wearing what they usually wear in wigwam. And hey, what's this? And I get calls from, you know, uh, from the management and, you know, from, from uh, Frontiers Records. Yeah. What's this? So that was the first little issue there. And, you know, during the Wall Street recordings, we. We have a hard time because, you know, two other guys, they really wanted us to mature image-wise and wanted us to be uh, more like a serious band. Uh, and we had some major discussions about that because the way I look at it is Wigwam was Wigwam. I mean, we, we created that style and for us to suddenly try to get cred from, from the press, mm, didn't really want to go there. But, you know... Uh, Wall Street became a compromise. We tried to uh, moderate ourselves a bit. And uh, music-wise, we didn't really know where to go. We kind of needed a single. We wanted to be heavier. We wanted, you know, all kinds of shit. And that's when when Tron brought up his new, you know, Dracula project because he'd, he'd been working on that for like five years and uh, been busy with that, which mm. even even cost me to, to release that Glamination album that I did in 2009 because we were supposed to record uh, non of Rock and Roll, but, you know, he was busy in the studio, so, okay, I have three, three months uh, off, so what to do? What to do with the next year? Okay, I might as well just release something else. Sure. It doesn't compete with Week One because I, I, I really believe in, you know, not competing with what, what you really want to do. So, uh, but I had to keep myself busy, of course. Uh, and he uh, he wanted us to uh, take whatever from from that album because he he had lost his faith in it because no nobody wanted to sign it and so I said you know John you've been working with this album for five years and I really think it deserves to be released it's it's a great album I really admired him for for his work mm. and. Uh, can we put the the wigwam logo on it if that helps and we can make a kind of a rock opera and it can it, it can be your name written all over it music by Tron Halter it's a wigwam album and we can sell it and we can make this kind of a, a like a theater production and we can do that you know uh, when there's no festival time no yeah. no other time for for touring and it can actually keep us busy and we all agreed and he was very happy uh, about my suggestion, and it's like, wow, the best friends, you know. <laughs> and then we started to work on that album. We, we even even uh, told the press that we weren't going out on tour uh, with Wall Street because we had other plans. And uh, we were going to release, you know, a, a, a pre press release in late August saying, you know, the rock opera and release album in October. And we even booked a theater for three weeks in Norway. 
a big theater. Right. And um, we had people, you know, starting to work on this, on the script and everything. And I even called, you know, uh, different singers to join. And then during summer, he never had time to answer my calls and never seemed to have time for me to go in there and record uh, record the album. And then in mid-August, I myself had to read on the internet that he and the bass player were members of Yorn and that they were to tour for the whole fall. And so I gave them both a call uh, and one guy didn't answer. He was too busy to answer. And the other guy was very, very uh, honest saying, yeah, uh, we're doing this tour. Yeah, but what about, but what about our plans? Mm. Yeah, it won't happen now. So when we have booked the theater, Oh, you have to. We have to wait. Do we have to wait until the until next year, 2013? Yeah, but you know we won't have time then either because we're going to release the new Baby Snakes album. Okay, so what about the summer 2013? No, won't happen because we're going to release a new Yarn album. So we're talking 2014. Yeah, uh, that's maybe. And then we had you know <laughs> a meeting in 2013. And talking about, you know, getting together again to do a couple of gigs that year and to start a writing process with, with a regular Wigbomb album. And at the end of that meeting, when we were putting on our jackets, Tron says, uh, guys, listen to this. And it puts on the CD and it's bloody, uh, the bloody Dracula project with Jorn London singing. And I say, oh, what's this? Isn't this the music that we were supposed to release like now or... Yeah, but I just sold it to Frontiers with Jorn Lando on vocals. Sure. Isn't it cool? And I said, yeah, that's very cool. And I went out that door and I thought, I'm never going to look back. Because that's, I, I've called it backstabbing. And uh, it is. I mean, after working together for 13 years, mm. I really believe that uh, that the other members would have, that the members would have so much respect for each other. Right. that I mean, to, 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 to give each other a call at least. Because I had called off a whole ensemble, my Queen ensemble, we were supposed to tour that year. And I just uh, told them like months ago, I mean, you're off. We don't, we're going to do week one. And to find that out on the internet, I mean, that's not serious. That's not uh, friends. And so that re really ruined it all for me. Right. So uh, I told the guys, I really think we should uh, break up the band because this. I, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, it's been so so much dishonesty in the previous years as well. Uh, so, but I, you know, I we did two shows, and it was easy to, I mean, to, to feel that the chemistry wasn't there anymore. Yeah. And uh, I even I really wanted them to do like a last tour at least, or at least right. one yeah. last show. But you know. Two out of three didn't answer at all, and it's like, yeah, let's let's get it official. It's just broke up, <laughs> and that's that's when I had started to to write with uh, Eric Mortensen. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if I be honest, um, I say, and obviously being a fan of Wigwam, Wall Street probably didn't hit home with the fans. I didn't connect as well as the first two albums. Probably, as you said, because uh. It, you guys were not gelling as well as you were before, and it, it was knows it lost. It almost like I say that fun factor behind it. Yeah, because yeah. as you said, it's, it's, you weren't it's... quite sure where you wanted to go with it. How I would look at the new ammunition album is, of course, it's got elements of wigwam. It's going to because it's coming through you, but yeah. it is a fantastic hard rock album. There, there is a distinction. Um. So I think it's probably going to connect maybe with people who didn't quite I not get Wigwam. That's probably not the right the, the right way to put it. Maybe it just wasn't their thing. What, you know, yeah. even though you need fun bands, you can't all be serious. You can't all be saving the planet. Sometimes you just got to have fun, and there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. You know, it's all about you know where Wigwam came from because we were actually just a jam band. Right. We played from nights jamming you know and and this was the time before for darkness you know nobody uh, the, the, this music style was so so dated nobody 
they wanted to listen to. Oh, it was a, po it was a poison anymore. chalice, wasn't it? Yeah, nobody wanted to touch it with a barge pole. It was, it was all industrial music, you know, and, and so when we started to this jam band, people really got into, our, into the music that we played because, you know, it was so many years ago that they had actually been able to, to rock out in a club to, to get sweet, Slade, Led Zeppelin, all that kinds of, of music. And so we, we, we started this kind of fun band, you know, because nobody would take that music serious anyway, but we really wanted to play that music. So how to be able to play that music at the same time, you know, to, to bring people in, you know. And, but, you know, after a year, we almost became like a cult band here in Norway. Right. And with the costumes and everything. And then people suddenly started to believe in us, and 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 we made this kind of a humor project. I mean, it was tongue in cheek. I mean, listen, to six, seven, the neighbor of the beast. We even had this song there, the the openers, <laughs> or opening song. I mean, the best song in the world. Uh, <laughs> who who wants to release such a song? I mean, if if it's not you know it's supposed to be humorous. Uh, but you know uh, what triggered us after a while was that we really got into this kind of music style again, and we wanted to do it for real. You know, we were kind of stuck in that image, uh, and how to break off out of that, that image. I, I, I really, I really didn't think that we needed to break out from that image, but we could mature even though the style was the same. Yeah, kind of. But you know, uh, we weren't all. We didn't all agree on that. And now, looking back, I have never had a better time of my life playing with these guys. And um, uh, and I think also Tron is where he wants to be. Right. I'm where I want to be, and we we, we can live happily ever after. <laughs> Never looking back. Indeed. Well, I mean, going forward with ammunition, as you say, it's not just um, a one-off project. Obviously, because of the fact that all of you are so busy uh, with your own individual stuff as well, uh, are you guys going to do any tour dates? Maybe festival? I know you booked for uh, for Vespi. That is certainly one date that has come up. But uh, are you looking to do other festivals and dates as well? Yeah, we, we start off. We already done some gigs. I uh, just did a gig uh, last week. Uh, I was a kind of a corporation gig. I mean, the Weapon Factory in Norway. <laughs> and ammunition and they were like and we, we thought you know okay cool we're gonna play you know rock and roll but hey do they know our music and we had 400 fans and they all work on that factory and they've been following us I mean the, the boss there the, the he's such a big fan so he wanted wanted his employees to, to really enjoy our music so he bought a lot of CDs and here's that great band that you heard so much about and, and they really rocked off to our songs. That's cool. And we did a show with Sweden Slade, Slade here in Norway, and we even headlined a festival up in uh, in uh, the north of Norway. And we're going to do now the 15th of April. That will be a John D in Oslo, and we'll do like four gigs, small tour. Right. And then we go to Sweden, do some small clubs there, and then we we'll do a Vespi Rock Festival. We'll do Ruken Festival in Norway. We do all kinds of festivals, but of course, it's a bit late to start to book festivals now because, you know, mm. before Christmas, nobody had heard of the band. So it's, hopefully there will be some slots. And, you know, uh, even though Eclipse also are going to play, they're going to do this uh, uh, tour in Spain and, uh, and the UK, I think. Uh, we obviously, can combine. Obviously pushing because, a new album, indeed. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I, I think it's time for us all. I mean, John Pell is my guitar player in the Queen band, and Hal Patino, he has, you know, ammunition. He quit King Diamond, of course. Hmm. So there's actually the three of us and Lasse. So it is, actually, we just have two, two competitive projects uh, competing about time. It's Eclipse and Ammunition, and, uh, and we will also travel together. Here in Norway, Eclipse will support ammunition, so they'll do like uh, 45 minutes and go off stage, and uh, then uh, Eric will go on stage and guitar with ammunition, and it's a cool bill. 
Yeah, it's it's a fantastic bill. Uh, now that'd be a good bill. There you are. I, I'm going to say to you now, it'd be fantastic. You could come over to the UK with a with a clip. So that would be fa- that would be fabulous. Yeah, I mean, we're we're six six musicians in nomination. There are four in in uh, Eclipse. I mean, it's a, just two extra guys, and we have two bands. Same equipment, you know, no problem at all. But, you know, uh, in the long term. Uh, I think next next time we release albums, I think it's going to be like not so close to each other. That yeah. that was art by accident, but uh, but uh, I think we worked it out pretty pretty good. We have the same same Booker, the Swedish guy, and uh, right now there are other uh, agencies uh, looking at uh, um, a collaboration with uh, Ammunition now. I know the agency has uh, been very positive, and yeah, we have. A couple of German companies, so uh, we definitely want to want to travel. We want to play live. I mean, that, that that that's the art of it. We write music to to play it live. Yeah. So for us, just to to uh, to release an album and leave it at that, I mean, that wouldn't do it for me. I really need to to bring that music out to the audience. Well, AJ, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I appreciate you taking the time to come on. I uh, say absolutely loving the album. It's fantastic stuff indeed. Um, it's a great combination. And fingers crossed that I get to see you guys play live in the future. Hopefully we we'll come around to the UK too. So uh, it's been a long time. Thanks ever so much indeed.